Hello, beautiful internet family. My name is Dan and I'm the director of the Fearless Drone Academy. I've made it my mission to empower drone pilots to become fearless, confident and competent in flight. And the whole idea of the drone course is to encourage beginners to understand everything about flying a drone. You know, the mindset hacks around it, like how to overcome the fears, how to overcome those um, barriers when you are feeling anxious about flying your drone. You know, what kind of resources you need to use, what kind of apps will help you. All of those things are covered in my two and a half hour course, which is a comprehensive, high quality video course uh, for beginner drone pilots trying to get into the space. And, you know, if you just bought yourself a brand new drone, or you're feeling overwhelmed, if you're feeling scared about flying after a recent crash maybe, or maybe you just got yourself a brand new drone and you're quite nervous and overwhelmed, then honestly this drone course is everything you need to know as a beginner drone pilot. And in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about the number one mistake that so many drone pilots make. This is something that you can avoid so easily. It's unbelievable how many people upload videos onto YouTube of them doing the wrong thing crashing their drone or running out of battery life and then blaming DJI or Parrot or, you know, <laughs> whoever, Autel Robotics, whoever the drone is, they blame them for their own ignorance and their own mistake here. Honestly, this is the number one mistake that so many drone pilots make on a daily basis. Now, if you do have one of these smaller drones, one of these mini drones, like the Mini SE, for example, then you would probably be aware that they do handle really well in the wind, which is probably quite surprising to a lot of people, but they're not perfect. You know, some of the larger drones can handle the wind a lot better than some of these smaller drones, even though it's got a level five wind resistance on the Mini SE, and it's got a wind rating of over 30 kilometers, I think it's 37 kilometers uh, wind rating on it. Still, I would be a little bit skeptical to push this drone in 37 kilometer winds. There are a few apps out there that you can actually monitor wind conditions, wind speeds, and that's something I'm gonna be showing you in this video, but there are also apps that you can flag certain criteria. So maybe the wind condition, maybe the rain, you know, it could be anything. It could be the visibility, it could be cloud coverage, like whatever kind of rating or uh, credential you wanna know about the environment that you're about to fly in. Uh, there are apps out there for that, and that's what I cover more comprehensively in the course. But in today's video, I'm gonna be talking more specifically about the Wind Compass app. Now, the reason I love this app so much is it gives you the wind direction. And this is the key ingredient that so many drone pilots seem to forget about. You know, the wind doesn't blow in all directions. It doesn't blow you back to the location that you wanna land the drone. It's got a set location, a set direction, sorry, that it's, it's actually pushing objects in. So if your drone is flying towards the wind, for example, then you're gonna have a lot more resistance. This little drone trying to fly against the wind, it's gonna be working a lot harder than it would be if the wind was pushing it along to the location you wanted to get to. So honestly, that's the thing that you need to be aware of. You wanna load up the Wind Compass app and you wanna see the wind and the gust rating because the gust rating is gonna be a lot more unpredictable than the wind. So if the gust rating is in the 30 kilometer range, let's say, and you're flying a tiny drone like the Mini SE, I would actually probably avoid a day like that. I wouldn't fly when there's 30 kilometer gusts. That's just too much for me. But you know, if you are to fly, let's say 25 kilometer gusts and the wind conditions are 20 kilometers, still like a fair bit of wind, you need to be aware of the wind direction. Because let's say the wind is blowing towards you and you're flying your drone in this direction. You're gonna have resistance trying to get to whatever location you wanna get to but when you wanna return, the wind is actually gonna push your drone back to you. There's gonna be less resistance, less stress about getting it back in time, but way too many people fly with the wind, which gets them to their location nice and quick, and they get there nice and snip snap fast, but then they don't think, well, now I've gotta fly back against the wind, and they're too far away. You know, I've seen so many videos online of people who fly like kilometers away, which firstly is illegal, but then they go, okay, well now I need to fly back. That should be easy. You know, I got out here pretty quickly, but they're flying against the wind now. And their drone's at 30% battery, let's say. It started beeping at them. And then they don't have the time. Physically, they don't have the time to get back to the location because the wind is too strong and it's actually blowing against your drone now when you're trying to return it. And really, this is something that baffles me that people don't think this through or don't take the time to really look into those details because 
the wind is one of the biggest risk factors for your drone, especially if you're trying to fly head on into the wind to get back before the battery dies. You know, I watched multiple videos of someone trying to fly back to an island. There was different islands or, you know, I saw someone on a mainland and they were trying to fly their drone back, but they were flying over the water, for example, and everything was fine. But then they tried to fly back on low battery and they didn't get back in time. So the drone landed in the ocean. It's happened way too many times. It's clearly avoidable, right? Like if there's heavy wind and it's blowing against your drone, I'm not saying that you shouldn't be flying and then coming back against the wind. That's, that's not the thing. It's that you've got to be aware that it will take longer to fly against the wind to get back and land your drone. So in that scenario, you really want to test it. You know, you want to test how strong the wind is when you're flying back, see how long it's roughly going to take. So then you know, okay, well at 40% battery, I'm going to start flying back now. I'm let's say 400, 500 meters away, whatever it may be. And I want to make sure that I come back with enough time to ensure that I'm safely going to be able to land and not have to worry about it because that would be like the most anxiety provoking situation to try to get your drone back in time before the battery died. So that's the number one tip. The number one like mistake that people make is they don't seem to account for wind direction. And the number one tip is using an app like Wind Compass or other wind apps that you can get on the Play Store or the App Store and just being aware of the wind speed, the gust speed and the wind direction and just being aware of it, you know, putting it into your thought process and actually accounting for it on the day of flying the drone. So valuable and something that will save so many people's drones. I nearly said lives. It will save the lives of your drone. So definitely keep it in mind the next time you fly your drone. If you do want more in-depth information on wind direction and wind speed and all those really important apps that definitely help you have a more enjoyable, safer experience when flying your drone, definitely check out the drone course, fearlessdrone.academy, and you can save 10% by using the code DANSTUBE. Go over and check it out right now. Two and a half hours of high quality video tutorials and guidance from a drone expert. Something I'm very proud of and there's so much value in this course. It's well worth your time. Anyway, thank you so much for watching guys. Make sure to have a fantastic day and I'll talk to you in the next one. Peace.